Can you get in for those of us that are older, we're old farts, and we, you know, we're not big into wins above replacement and all that. So in his MVP season, his WAR was a ten, right? Spectacular. Right. This year, right. it's at a point four. I, I believe that's correct. That's what no, I'm that no, it's, that's incorrect. It's uh, at about one point six, and he's expected to have another one point six to the end of the year. So right, you well, expect you to, to be right. somewhere between a three and four. All right. Well, if you go for then, I, cakes. Read this right here. I'm on BaseballReference.com. It says point four. <laughs> I don't know where that's coming from. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know anything well, about BaseballReference.com has a different war. All right. Well, we we can I can call you and we can go over that. But according to Fangraphs, which is what I use because of the way that they construct their, their wins above replacement. And it's, it's used a little bit more frequently than, than baseball reference. And I've never seen baseball reference and fan grass be that far apart. So I think the number that you're looking at is incorrect. But in any event, let, let's give Harper the benefit of that and say that I'm right and he's worth more like more like 1.6 wins above replacement right, right now. If you put him at 1.6, that, right. that still puts him at like a top 200 player or something. It doesn't even put him that high. I mean, it's crazy. Um, right, but that's my point, that I think that he's a very good outfielder and he's a productive outfielder with a high ceiling. But to say that he's a great player based on his career to date, I think is disingenuous. They've got him at 148. So Fangraphs has him at a 1.6. Uh, baseball Reference has him at a 0.4. That seems like a crazy difference. Yeah, who knows where but they're getting their numbers. that's got him yeah. at 148. Mm-hmm. That means he's the 148th best player this year based on that stat. Well, he's hitting 220 or whatever he's hitting. Yeah. What are the yeah, factors I mean, his, that go into that stat for, for the for the old farts out there? Everything. So wins above replacement takes into account offensive production, defensive production, fielding, um, base running. It takes into account everything. So obviously the higher number is better. And, again, like you said, a 10 wins above replacement season can be considered – uh, it, it, very close to one of the all-time great seasons. Like, you look at the Barry Bonds season, those are, I want to say, are like 13 or 14 wins above replacement. Babe Ruth, those type of seasons are very high. Um, but if you have a 10 wins above replacement season, heck, if you have a 6 wins above replacement season, that's probably going to be high enough to put you in the elite category of MLB players. So, you know, you you look at what where Bryce has been, and, you know, again, it's 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 not as high as people either think it might be or wish it might be or expect it to be. And there are a lot of reasons for that, right? I would even argue that his season this year is valuable only because the infield shift is robbing him of singles. And that's what's keeping his batting average down. But you look at some of the other things, the fact that he can be a top 10 outfielder with a 212 batting average tells you something, right? It tells you that when he does hit the ball, he's doing a lot of good things. And this isn't the, this isn't a Harper bashing session. It's just to try to put into context that I don't think that he's a great player. But that's okay. Great players are rare, right? Mike Trout's a great player. Um, Mookie Betts is turning out to be a great pay- player. Manny Machado looks like a great player in today's MLB. Bryce Harper does not. And by what metric, by the way, is he this year a top ten player? By Outfielder. wins above replacement, by his run, the runs created based after you adjust for league and park effects. Um, his weighted on base percentage is high, and that and that's just a new way to look at on base in terms of how many runs you can expect based on the outcome at the plate. So batting average now is a very antiquated way of looking at a baseball player's value. And we have a lot better metrics to, to suss that value at. And by those metrics, again, Bryce Harper looks a lot better than that, than that 212 average. So, um, again, like I said, this isn't me bashing Harper as being a bad player. It's just he's not a great player. And, that's, and, and I take a pretty firm stance on that. Do you think that. if you had Mike Rizzo, you know, sitting in his living room having a drink, he would tell you, I don't think we can make the playoffs? Well, I don't, I don't think, think he would say that. I don't think him. I don't think him as general manager of the Nats would say that. But I would think that if it was you, me, and him in a bar, and none of us had any vested interest in the team or had to worry about like what was said about the team, I think that he would give a more honest assessment. Don't you? I don't know. I think he probably feels like he's a competitive son of a bitch. He probably feels like he's still in this. Um, well, he's a competitive I, son of a bitch because yeah. he's the GM of the team and he put it together, and it's on him. But yeah. again, take. Yeah, you know, looking at it from the outside, look at it from the outside. You're six games back. 
you haven't really been able to do anything of note in terms of being impressive on the field. Your your pitching staff is has a very hard time of giving you a quality start outside of uh, Max Scherzer. When you do get a quality start, the bats go silent and you can't do anything. But with here's it. the question: See, the thing is, and I know we got to go to break, but here's the the point. And I think he would point to all the teams that have been six games back and come back, and there are a litany of. Them. I mean, there are just a ton of them. So he would of say course. that. And oh, hold on. And then the second thing I think he would say, and this is just a basic question: Do you think the team has underachieved, or just this is who they are? Uh, I think they have underachieved. So, yeah, I think that's who they. Are. I think this is who they are, and I, I guess that's the that's the crux of the debate in terms of where you're looking for this team to be and where you're hoping that the improvement's going to come. I I think that this team had high expectations during the season. The preseason, I picked them to win the division, um, but it just came apart, and that happens sometimes. And they were just never able to get back in it. Right? They kept falling behind. They got themselves back into it where you would think that they would get back into it but they never quite took that second step, and that's why we are where we are.